This is a Reliant Robin. You probably know it from the most infamous Top Gear bit of all time. Oh no. oh no. What if I told you that they lie? How did Top Gear fake their most famous segment ever? And what's it like to actually drive this thing? making me drive cars. Today, we're gonna get behind the wheel of this tiny British three-wheeler and find out. Hopefully, I don't flip my second car. All right, so we have a Reliant Robin. We're in a mountain. Yeah. Uh, the steering wheel only moves, like it's directly connected to that front wheel. So it only moves like three degrees from right to left. I get like a lot of resistance if I go past like two o'clock. Really? Yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but I can 100% feel that there's one wheel in front of me. Like it feels like I'm driving a wheelbarrow. Oh, also there's rocks. Oh no. Oh, right, the back wheels, I forgot. <laughs> I mean, honestly, man, it is like insanely slow, but not like comically insanely slow. Oh, leaning. All right, going uphill, let's give it the beans. <laughs> give it the beans. Yeah. Cookie, baby. You know, whether it's accurate or not, Top Gear really did put the fear of the Robin in me, especially since I've tipped a car before and wrecked a four wheeled car that I'm just gonna kill us both. But honestly, it's pretty sweet. Now, although many Americans know about the Robin from Top Gear, Reliant had actually been making these three wheelers since the mid 30s. Their first one was called the Regent, and it was basically a motorcycle with a van on the back of it. Reliant's second three-wheeler was called the Regal, and it came out in 1956. Finally, the Robin dropped in 1973. Nearly 40 years of three-wheel experience went into this thing here. It barely looks like a motorcycle at all, besides the front wheel. But why would a company spend so much time building three-wheeled cars in the first place? Well, Reliant was based in a town called Tamworth, which according to this map, was a town surrounded by over 20 coal mines, which would be key to Reliance initial success. It was a city steeped in mining tradition and miners needed cheap transportation. You could buy a Robin for 801 pounds. That's $10,000 in today's money. The cars were very economical to register and ensure. Fuel economy still good. This thing gets 60 miles to the gallon, but most importantly, you didn't need a full driver's license to drive one on the road. In the Top Gear segment, a Robin owner mentions that a lot of miners got to work on a motorcycle, but there's one problem with motorcycles. They ain't got no roofs. And Northern England gets snow. The Regent, the Regal, and the Robin fit the bill. The affordable nature of these cars meant that they were very popular in Britain's working class. So I think it's pretty obvious why Reliant decided to build a cheap car for the working people that inhabited their city. Now this Reliant we have here is actually the Super Robin, which means it has an 850cc four banger with a whopping 40 horsepower. The curb weight though is only 961 pounds. So you put those two facts together and you get a face melting zero to 60 time of 16.1 seconds and a top speed of 85 miles an hour. No wonder they call it the Super Robin. It is the race car version of a Robin. And you know what race cars have? Lex hand windows. We got a window with hinges. Does it stop? No. No. I really do like this shade of white. It's like a very yellow white. It's like a cashmere white. The back of it is like a really nice Volkswagen Rabbit. And the front looks like a Honda Civic. Yeah. <laughs> this thing's got everything. Look, look at the tiny lawnmower battery. The engine is behind the front wheel. That's super soft. <laughs> All right, so the suspension does not inspire a lot of confidence. But this interior actually looks pretty decent. The entire interior looks to be made from vacuum foreign plastic. Feels like my grandpa's briefcase from the 80s. I mean, I like where the gauges are. I like how many gauges there are. I like the controls, super simple. This is a really nice example of a really quirky car, I'm gonna say. 100%. But the question is, will it flip? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> yeah, I, I get to drive it. All right, Jaybird, this is a three-wheeled car. I don't have a lot of confidence in this thing or in myself. In fact, I'm downright terrified. I believe in you, Jaybird. Thanks, Jaybird. 
Let's see if we can take this turn without flipping this thing over, huh? Let's go. This thing is actually more stable than I thought it was, which brings me to my next point. That famous Top Gear segment was all fake. In a 2016 column for the Sunday Times, Jeremy Clarkson himself admitted that the Robin segment was fabricated and that, quote, a normal reliant Robin will not roll unless a drunken rugby team is on hand. Robin owners knew this for a long time and people who know that TV is fake weren't surprised to learn that this TV show was fake, but some people were dumb, so it was news to them. So how did Top Gear do it? Well, in his column, Clarkson says, quote, we asked the back room boys to play around with the differentials so that the poor little thing rolled over every time I turned the steering wheel. All right, so after watching the Top Gear segment hundreds and hundreds of dozens of times, it's hard to say what they did to the differential to help it roll over. It's possible that a limited slip differential would direct more power to the outside wheel during a turn, promoting rotation and increasing weight transfer to the outside. Now granted, that's just my theory, but the Top Gear team did make other changes besides the supposed differential. We found the website for the Reliant Motor Club where the owners of the site were actually on set for the shoot. They say that the Top Gear crew replaced the front wheel with the larger one, which moved the center of gravity higher up, making Clarkson's three-wheeler very unbalanced compared to the stock Robin. With Jeremy Clarkson in the driver's seat on the right side of the car and only performing left-hand turns, the Robin was ready to roll over. The wheelie in the segment was done with a second modified car. You can see that it's got a Reliant badge on the hood. The car that rolled didn't follow the money. But it's not this Top Gear segment that killed the Reliant Robin. It's actually something completely unrelated. I'm gonna do it again. Coal was incredibly valuable to the British economy. If the miners went on strike, everybody felt it. In the 1970s, they struck twice, asking for higher wages, and they won both times. In 1979, a lady named Margaret Thatcher came to power, and she said, yo, guys, this cannot happen again. But then in 1984, it happened again. The miners were protesting against plans to cut coal production, which would put jobs at risk. But they didn't know that Thatcher was a sneaky lady. She had secret sneaky coal stockpiles and they essentially lost all of their leverage. And shortly after the strike, 20 mines were closed. Lots of miners lost their jobs and had little support. Now, why is this important? Well, as I mentioned, miners loved their robins. With a lot of miners out of work and British coal production slowing down in favor of cleaner energy sources and cheaper foreign coal, Reliant could not rely on their customer base to buy new cars anytime soon. Now, I know it sounds insane that losing a relatively small number of customers could doom a company, but Reliant only sold about half a million cars over the course of its life. If you're gonna sell something cheap you need to sell tons of them to survive and Reliant didn't. By comparison British Motor Corporation and its successors sold over five million of the original two-door Mini Cooper. Now obviously there were other factors at play here. First Reliance were built as cheaply as possible. You got a piece of wood right here holding up the dash. Nice little wood shim. Yeah. The cheap car sword cuts both ways. People can buy your car or they can also choose to spend a little bit extra money and get something way better, which is probably why the Mini sold so well. Reliant just didn't have a solid reputation outside of their already loyal customer base. It didn't help that Reliant was also seen as a punchline in pop culture long before Top Gear even did their episode. So when things started to go downhill in the 80s, there was little Reliant could do to recover from it. The company filed for bankruptcy in late 1990, and it was bought by a firm called Beans Engineering, then filed again in 1994. A few different investors bought Reliant the rest of the decade. The last Robin was a special edition with gold paint, leather seats, and alloy wheels, and they called it the Robin 65, commemorating 65 years of three-wheeler production. The Tamworth factory closed in 1998 and was torn down. Now there's a neighborhood with streets named for Reliant models. Reliant is still around at a new facility, but now they just sell spare parts for all their old cars. I'm gonna do it again. 
Hey Gabe, we're gonna come back. We're gonna do a couple more. We just tipped it. Top Gear was right. I think the cold's okay. Yeah, dude, I thought I tipped that thing. <laughs> so I rubbed the front of the car onto the ground, but I didn't tip. It's just squatted. But we're gonna see him up on the front right is real quick, and then head back up there. At first, I was thinking, no, oh, he's just not going fast enough. Maybe I should give him a shot. Not doing that anymore. So it won't tip, and that's because you will hit the front fascia before it'll allow you to tip over. Top of your one at the flip, right? They probably found the same limitation we did. That is why Top Gear put the big wheel on the front and messed with the dip. And messed with the dip. And probably removed the soy bar. And probably removed the soy bar. It takes at least three things to make this tip, and I'm not one of them. Just because Top Gear faked it and cheated and made these things roll does not mean by any means that this is a stable car. I don't want to influence anybody to get a Reliant Robin, just start hucking it around the mountains because I just took a turn at about 35 miles an hour and I buried the front end of the thing into the road. Did the Reliant Robin deserve to die? That's a pretty harsh question without an obvious answer. All right, if you think about it, the Reliant Robin and Cole had a lot in common with each other. They both had rivals that were way better options. And in both cases, miners were the ones who lost in the end. I guess my uncle Jeremy Clarkson said it best. Owning a Reliant Robin is like having a family pet. And if you play with its differential, it will even roll over. So you can tickle its tummy.